Hi guys, welcome to the shack. You are looking at a mini trans impedance amplifier, um, 10 kilohertz to 180 megahertz, uh, manufactured by and or branded as an LZ1AQ, uh, Lima Zulu 1 Alpha Quebec amplifier. And the reason I'm looking at this now is because I was on the um, Harwell Amateur Radio Society net on Friday evening and I run the club's X feed and whenever I uh, attend a net, I post on the X feed to let everybody know that we are live on 7.150 megahertz or 3.710, 1.846, etc. Um, and inviting shortwave listeners, other amateurs to tune in to our signals and post signal reports for, for those of us in the club that but further afield so it's always interesting when you're on a club net to know if your signal that you're transmitting is being heard um, further away um, so I did that and a gentleman who I shan't name he can make himself known if he w wishes to um, in Escher in uh, Surrey posted some signal reports and when I asked him what antenna he was using he said he was using a loop with um, an LZ1AQ uh, amplifier and some kind of phasing system, which I forget. Uh, and when he, when I read uh, LZ1AQ, I thought, hang on a minute, I, I've heard that before somewhere. And, um, and, it, made, and it made me realise that I actually owned one of these, or at least a mini, mini version. I don't have much on technical specification, but I bought this with this which is a donut wideband antenna 10 kilohertz to 180 megahertz and i bought it because obviously it's a compact wideband loop um for use with my dsp2 portable um and it was like 20 quid from amazon or something and, and to be honest with you when i tried it in a fairly noisy environment it was basically rubbish and i haven't looked at it since but this guy quoted um LZ1AQ and I thought and he was hearing us pretty well actually so I thought well maybe it's worth another go but with a bigger loop so um, I I constructed a, a, a simple loop to attach to the input of this the same diameter as a Welbrook loop um, and the purpose of this is what it does it takes high Z antennas and um, converts them to low impedance so they're suitable for coaxial cable 50 ohms um, so behind me there's a Wellbrook loop, one of my Wellbrook loops on the floor. Next to it is a loop attached that will be attached to this um, amplifier, uh, impedance converter, because I'm always looking for something small or smaller than I'm currently using when I'm traveling. At the moment, and I have been for years now, I've been traveling with the Benito NTI Mega Loop FX, which is brilliant. And to be fair, it packs away into a pretty small package. But if I could travel with something as small as this and my DSP2 with just a you know three meters of wire, even better. But of course, I want to know if I'm going to be able to hear stuff with this as well as I hear stuff with the Mega Loop FX, which is a sort of very high performing aerial. And I figured probably not, but what better way to test the performance of this uh, of a loop with this amplifier than comparing its performance in real time with the same target signal which is why i then employed my rsp duo uh sdr receiver and if you look on my screen you can see that there's two receive setups the the upper window is the uh, LZ1AQ, which doesn't even have an, which doesn't even have a um, antenna attached to it just yet, but it, it will have. And I'm surrounded by a literally by a rat's nest of cables, so I've got to be a little bit careful what I'm doing here. Um, so I'm just going to attach the uh, the loop to the uh, to the little amplifier, which is now done. And before I switch it on, let's just double check. So I've got a signal here, 11815, which is Radio China International. So I just want to be able to make, you know, just make sure that we've still got some audio, which we no longer have. That was a quite a strong signal um, a few minutes ago. Um, let's have a look. Okay, 11880. Right, is that better?
okay, 11.880, so let's just, even my memory's not so good as to know exactly what that is. Uh, right, so let's double check. Uh, 11880. Uh, that is Radio Romania International. Okay, fine. Radio Romania International. And we have audio so in this lower window with the Walbrook Loop. I've got the decimation set at four on both receivers and antennas, the gain set in the same position. Um, so that's the audio with the Walbrook Loop. Just bring the audio bandwidth up a little bit. So five, so the audio bandwidth filter, 5523. Five, so let's set the same bandwidth, 5523 five, for the little amplifier, 5523. Five, five, okay, right, I'm gonna switch it on now and then hopefully we'll get some signal uh, on the in the upper window. Right, so that's now on, let's tune to the right frequency, 880. Okay, so you can see, um, I've got the same amount of zoom. And lots of noise. So although that little amplifier and impedance converter is a neat little device, um, I've got plus S9 plus 20 dB of signal strength, but the noise floor which is around minus 120 dB, uh, dBm with the Wellbrook and allowing enough modulation for some decent audio, or at least discernible audio, on the little uh, amplifier on the LZ1AQ. The noise floor is now so high, um, there's almost no modulation and therefore almost no audio. So, and even if I reduce the gain, it doesn't really do anything uh, to the signal to noise. And in the end, it's all about signal to noise. There's no point having a signal that's S9 plus 20 dB, dBm, um, if, with no audio. Here on the Wellbrook, the signal is around, sort of, well, it's dropping down to S8 and then it's so it's around about S8 at the moment, and now it's S9 plus 5, and I've got audio. And then go back to the little amplifier. So this is a, a very good example as to why when you buy a wideband antenna, a wideband active loop, it pays... I know that the good ones are expensive. The Welbrook Loop was expensive when it was in manufacture. The Benito NTI Mega Loop FX is expensive, but this is a, an excellent comparison of what you get for your money. You know that little that little amplifier board is quite neat in its design. It's got an internal rechargeable battery. Um, it impedance matches, which is also great as well. But it's introducing, you know, a huge amount of noise. We've gone from you know the well, the Welbrook Loop noise floors here. And the noise floor with the little amplifier is, you know, above minus 80 dBm. So making it almost unusable. Um, and I'm just wondering if I can find an even bigger signal. Uh, it's going to be difficult actually to find a signal um, that I'm going to, where I'm actually going to be able to copy any audio. I have copied audio on it, um, but it's much more difficult, obviously. So, so there you go. There's a direct comparison of the Welbrook Loop, um, and the Benito Mega Loop FX is, you know, offers the same basic performance, same audio bandwidth filtering, same level of RF gain, um, and there's just, there's just, it's night and day. So Welbrook Loop and LZ1AQ.
So there you go. Okay, well, um, that tells me that I won't be taking that little amplifier with me on my travels, which is a shame because it would be perfect. Um, but there's no point taking an amplifier that makes everything a hundred times more difficult to hear. So uh, um, um, what a brilliant piece of kit the uh, RSP Duo dual tuner is to be able to, um, you know, use the same target signal in real time, observe the signal um, is, uh, is brilliant. And um, yeah, it's the perfect way to demonstrate that when it comes to wideband antennas, you get what you pay for and if you actually want to hear something you should buy them the best antenna that you can afford um just goes without saying really so uh, anyway i hope that was interesting and maybe useful thanks for watching 73